Mike Krzyzewski, Duke head coach, went over Boston College yesterday. Big game coming up on Thursday against Florida State. Number five ranked team in the country. How's the morale, coach? Good. How's, how, how are you? I heard you had yeah, knee, out, knee problems. And, uh, yep. Yeah. Is that from taking charges all your life? Or? Yeah, but I, look, if there's a loose ball right now, Coach, I'll go get it. So how are you doing? I'm doing okay. It was, uh, you know, what are we, about nine days after surgery. So it's still uh, so, you know, shooting a couple of jumpers here just to let the defense know. You, you know I'm trying to keep them honest. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, you could never drive, so we always played you for a jump shot. Absolutely, and I made and, you pay. And you were only a streak shooter. <laughs> That's true. So... <laughs> Uh, when's the first time you heard of Jeremy Lin? Uh, when he was playing for Tommy, Tommy Amaker uh, at Harvard. And, you know, Tommy uh, obviously was my point guard and assistant. And and uh, and so I, I saw him play, uh, not in person, but uh, in watching Harvard. And I thought he was really good. And uh, obviously no one thought he would be what he is t- today. And uh, but he was good, and he's big. You know, he's six three and about two hundred pounds, and so he can handle the, you know, the physicality of the NBA. But did Amaker even know himself if Jeremy Lin could play in the NBA? I think Tommy thought that he had a chance, but uh, you know, that and he did get a chance. Uh, but I don't think anybody could have predicted this. And I, I really think that it's a matter of what – see, guys get better. You know, uh, some guys do and some guys don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there, there are guys who get better. And as long as they have the – you know, they're big like that and they have good athletic ability. Yeah, you know, I, I think Lynn has uh, – Jeremy has great balance. And uh, his feet are always under him. Um, he's got – He's perfect for Mike D'Antoni. You know, Mike and I are very close. We worked together with the U.S. team for the last six years. And Mike's offense, when he has a point guard that has an extended dribble, can an extended dribble, not just dribbling up, uh, you know, on top of the key, but can penetrate, but still keep your dribble and and uh, probe. It's like a probing extended dribble. And, but is he a system point guard that by just by proxy of playing that position and playing a number of minutes, you're going to put up good numbers? No, because, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, I think he's a really good point guard. And in Mike D'Antoni's offense, he allows a, a guy who has that extended dribble to make multiple plays uh, within an exchange, within a possession. And uh, so he fits really well for that. You know, this, uh, I, don't, I don't know what that, what that even means, the system uh, point. You know, look, you're either a good guard or you're not a good guard. <laughs> well, Jason Terry said that, you know, this is just about being in the system, that I think Steve Nash made it look so easy, effortless. Yeah, yeah. And well, Steve then Nash it, makes a lot of things look easy. But but it's not it's like Joe Montana was in the ultimate system. It, with the Niners, they scripted the first fifteen plays. You can't be in a more system quarterback than Joe was. Yeah, I don't know why that's wrong or you know, what how does that diminish you know, I mean I don't know how that to me. And we're all trying, you know, like every year I try to figure out a system that's good for the talent that I have because the main thing is to use your talent the best way you can. And if Mike D'Antoni and Jeremy Lin have figured that out, then I think that's terrific. A lot of people don't figure things out. They don't ever come up with a system for any of their players. But you adapt, though, and that's what I think, you know, part of the genius of, you know, that you have these players, different personalities. Some are staying a year, two years, maybe three years. But now you bring in Austin Rivers, and I don't know if you've officially turned the team over to him or given him a little bit more freedom, but the difference in Austin Rivers running the point and say the freedom you gave Bobby Hurley when he first got there is what? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I agree with that. I'm just saying that, the, the, you, know, I, you know, Mike D'Antoni's system is not exactly the same as it was with Steve Nash because there's only one Steve Nash, you know. But, uh, you know, the thing for, for Jeremy is that he, he, has, uh, he, he now has good shooters around him. 
And as when he, he's learning how to use Stoudemire, and I think when Carmelo comes back, he'll learn how to use him. And then, you know, they're, they're just more weapons. And, uh, you know, they – you know, they have a good thing going. And, I mean, the kid's for real, all right? I mean, everybody should just give him credit. It's not it, – this isn't the hula hoop or something, you know. It's not going to go by the wayside. The kid's going to be a really good player from now on. And, uh, uh, you know, again, system, system. But at the end of clocks, when he has stared down some big guys and hit threes over them, that's not a system. That's guts and talent, and uh, and the, the ability to perform under pressure. And uh, I think any system would like that. A uh, poll question today. We're talking to uh, Mike Shushevsky. A hard hitting poll question it is President's Day. If you could have a beverage with any president in history, a who, beverage? Well, a beer. Who would you no, I'd rather have a glass of wine. Okay, glass of wine, nice, uh, you know, Cabernet. Uh, who would it be? With you, you pick the president. Any any president. Yeah. Who would well, you? I'd, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to go with one from, you know, the founding fathers, either Washington or Lincoln. Yeah, uh, just I'd like to know how Wash well how Washington saw everything, and I'd like to know how Lincoln felt when his country was at war with its, its own country, and how he handled that, and would have more than a glass of wine, I think. What if Washington was a North Carolina fan? He would not be a North Carolina <laughs> fan. Not after a few bottles of wine. <laughs> I'd have him. Um, I'd have him. I know that. I I wanted to ask you this uh, before I let you go with Austin Rivers and. And I don't know how you sense this as a coach of somebody who wants the ball, no matter what grade they're in. Right. Um, how do you know that? At, at what well, point? with Tim, it was easy. And he, you know, he's always wanted the moment, and has uh, he's had a lot of pressure on him his whole high school and AAU career. But you don't look so, at him as a freshman that no, wants no, it. No, no, no. Okay. No, I. And the thing is. You know, he wanted a ball all season. He didn't deserve to have the ball all the season. You know, uh, he has earned the right to have the ball uh, most of the time, if, you know, and especially in pressure, pressure situations. But not just to score the ball, but to distribute it because, you know, Seth Curry is really playing well for us, and uh, uh, Andre Dawkins can hit big shots. So uh, I think he's really comfortable in his surroundings right now, you know, he and the other guys are really close and they know how to use each other's talents very well. And Did you call that play in the huddle against North Carolina? No, what we had is, you know, there was, we had a, a, the fifth foul on Tyler Thornton when Zeller got fouled. And, uh, so we were able to talk about two scenarios. One, if he hit both free throws and Chris Collins drew up, I let my guys can, you know, sometimes he or Wojo will draw up a play. And uh, Chris is really good at that, and so is Wojo. And so he drew up a play for a three. And, and then I told uh, Austin that if he only hit one, that would go to an open angle, which is a high ball screen and spread the court and, to try to either get, you know, to make a play, you know, make you see what's there and you make the play. So he was, you know, they were prepared for those two scenarios. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Mm. Hey, yeah. by, by the way, this yeah. man crush that you have on when is there anything I can do? You know, like I know D'Antoni, I can say something to him if you want to meet him or anything like that. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I guess it's like you with Leitner, sort of your man crush with Leitner. Well, yeah, but Leitner, yeah. how is this coach? <laughs> uh, know, I mean, you're just an outsider you're with right. a bad knee. I know, I know. Uh, no, I just, uh, I sort of am a voyeur, just looking, watching, enjoying. That's all, coach. It's yeah. just, well, that's... this thing is, look, he's the real deal. This is an unbelievable thing for basketball worldwide. I can't believe you didn't recruit him. I mean, I I got to. Well, he, you know, I can't believe Stanford didn't recruit him. I know. I was saying that. He's, He's he in Palo, Palo Alto. Alto High School. <laughs> they said he could be a walk-on there. Yeah. Yeah. Imagine well, if he was at Durham High or something and, uh, you know, slipped through your fingertips. That would have been sad. <laughs> I would have been very angry about that. Uh, tell the Plumleys, of course, I say hello as always. 
Yeah, uh, Marshall too. You know, yeah, he's red shirt. Oh yeah, he's all still, twenty uh, feet of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 21 feet. Oh, 21 feet of the Plumleys. That's yeah. great. Uh, yeah. Good to visit with you. Good luck All against right. Florida State, Coach. All right. Get well. All right. That's Mike Shevsky, Duke head coach. Almost sound like he meant that. Get well.